Hello, and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing and room acoustics. Today is going to be a intense but awesome lesson on quadratic residue diffusers or QRD for short. Now, if you have looked into building these guys before, you know it's kind of complex. There's a little bit of math involved and they're not the easiest thing to build. However, I think they are a great addition to your home studio, especially on the back wall. Um, so I'm going to teach you how I have designed and built a QRD uh, Schroeder diffuser with a prime number of 13 in the example, but I'm also gonna go into some of the theory and just go over the formula so that you have a, a real understanding of what is behind these diffusers. So you're not just going on the internet and looking at calculators and not necessarily sure if, if what you're getting uh, is correct. I can say for myself, I bought some plans for a quadratic diffuser and after doing all this research and learning, the fundamentals, I believe the plans are actually incorrect. So this is why it's really important to know what you're doing and hopefully this lesson will help you out with that. Before I dive in, I do have some free resource for you. This is my free acoustic treatment guide, uh, which is a PDF that you can download right away uh, that will give you the general outline of what I recommend for acoustic treatment in your basic home recording studio. So this is a great place to start. And if you've already done some research on acoustic treatment, it's a great supplement to help reinforce your knowledge. Uh, to download that right away, you can go to soundproofyourstudio.com acoustic. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. All right, let's jump into this lesson on how to build a quadratic residue diffuser. So first we're gonna figure out how this diffuser works. And it was designed and created by Manfred R. Schroeder. And he theorized that he could use a, a number theory sequence with prime numbers that would give an even dispersion of sound in the field or into your room. And the idea here, I'm not gonna go into like the super complex uh, aspects of this, which you can research on your own, but the general idea I do wanna talk about, which is that when sound hits a quadratic residue diffuser, it, it's, it has an extremely efficient way of returning that sound back into the room without a direct reflection, but with an even dispersion of sound back into the room, which is pleasant to our ears and makes the room sound better. So quadratic residue diffusers are some of the best diffusers that you can put in a room, and that is according to the Master Handbook of Acoustics. So just wanna let you know that that's where I'm getting a lot of this information from. The idea behind the quadratic residue diffuser is that it's essentially a box and we have these wells, which are these slits in the diffuser. And you can see in this diagram here of the finished model that I have for my client. And you can see that we've got, you know, differing well depths that the sound is going to go into. And then we have a consistent well width, the width of those slots across the diffuser. Now, the well width, the distance from slot to slot, is going to determine how high our diffuser can actually work, meaning the highest frequency that it will efficiently diffuse sound back into the room. The well depth, meaning how deep our diffuser goes, is going to determine the lowest frequency that we can diffuse in our room. There are some serious limitations to the quadratic residue diffuser and honestly all diffusers. And one of the main th problems is that to achieve an equal diffuse field across the entire threshold of hearing, which is 20 Hertz all the way to 20,000 Hertz, uh, it's impractical to design a single diffuser that can do that. Just for example, uh, I calculated a 40 Hertz diffuser, one that can go down to 40 Hertz and the diffuser depth of your wells would have to be eight feet and six inches deep. So impractical in, in nothing but the highest end studios where you have eight feet of space to just lose in your room due to building a diffuser. That said, for the, the well width, if you wanted to hear up to 20,000 Hertz and get that 20,000 Hertz diffused, your well width would only be 
0.31 inches such a small small tiny slat and and there's also some problems with the slat getting so small that it actually ends up creating absorption which is not what you want to do so there are limitations and this is why diffusion is really done on a, a more narrow frequency spectrum kind of in the mid-range in our rooms but that still is helpful when we're trying to liven up a room we're trying to create and reduce a flutter echo and reflections bouncing off a flat surface so now let's talk about the math behind these QRD or quadratic residue diffusers. Now I'm not a big, you know, math person on this channel. I don't usually show complex equations, but this one I think is important to understand. It's not complex by any means, but it does use some things that might need some explaining. So the idea here is that the well depth proportionality is going to equal N squared modulo P. And this is something you probably have seen in textbooks or maybe you've seen it on the internet when you've researched this. And unless you have done some math classes where you've learned about what the modulo operation is, you're probably like me and you're like, what the heck is modulo? Like, what does that mean? So I'm gonna explain that for you because this is interesting and it's also helpful in understanding how the number sequence is derived. Now, the well depth proportionality factor is what we're figuring out. You might say, why don't you just say well depth? Why this proportionality factor? And the idea is because all of this is like a, is a ratio, meaning that we're not getting an exact measurement. It's that these are the ratios, the relationship of the numbers to each other that then can be plugged into centimeters, inches, feet, whatever you want. And then the relationship of those numbers to each other um, can we can figure out everything. So I just want to explain that, that that we're not finding the actual well depth in inches or centimeters, we're finding just the ratio of the well depths to each other. So that said, n in our formula equals the integer, uh, any integer, any number greater than or equal to zero. So this will be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way up, usually to about 23 is how, how far these diffusers are usually built. And then the p is equal to our prime number. So just quick math re recap, prime numbers are just numbers that are divisible by themselves and one. So it can't be divided by two, three, four, and, and equal an equal number or a whole number. So that said, our prime numbers for these diffusers are usually 5, 7, 11, 13, uh, 17, and then 23. So those are some common prime numbers we're going to use. And to explain this modulo thing, I'm just going to take an example. So let's say we're building a diffuser with a prime number of 11. So a QRD 11 is something you might see on the internet or something like that. And let's just say we want to figure out the well depth uh, proportionality factor uh, of the fifth slot or the fifth well in the sequence. So what we would do is we'd take n squared, so n is going to be 5, the fifth well, n is our integer, and we're going to say, okay, n squared is 25 modulo p, p is going to be 11, p is the prime number in this formula, and so n squared modulo p, okay, cool, what does that mean? So the modulo is interesting. What it says is take your n squared of 25 and then divide that by the prime number p, 11, and what you're gonna get is not a whole number. You're gonna get uh, 25, 11 goes into 25 two times, meaning 22, so that gets up, up to 22, but we still have a remainder, going back to elementary school math, of three. So if we have a 22 plus three, we get 25. So the modulo uh, operation is saying, the, do all that math, and the solution is going to be the remainder, not the 22 remainder three. So it's kind of a weird way of saying, just take that remainder and that's your solution. So for this formula to work, we're gonna say now our well depth proportionality factor is equal to three, because that's what n squared modulo p ended up being in this example. So take that in, it's kind of complicated for us non-math people, uh, but once you understand it, you're like, okay, that, that's not too crazy, I, I get that idea. And honestly, you don't need to do all this math because there's calculators out on the internet, but I want you to understand what the calculators are doing in the background, because I think that's important. Now, you can see this chart here, and this is from the Master Handbook of Acoustics, uh, and this shows you 
all of the the modulo the the formula figured out for all these prime number sequences for our different quadratic residue diffusers so this is done for you you can see here the integers are on the left we have the prime numbers on the top column and you just go from zero one two three four five and those are all your integers meaning all each of your wells or your slots in the diffuser and if we picked for example the prime 13 diffuser, we could look and see what the relationship of all the well depths should be. So you might look at this and be like, okay, that's cool, but how do I build this thing? Don't worry, we're getting there, I'm getting there. Uh, lastly, I wanna talk about the idea of a period, which is one whole sequence of the quadratic re residue diffuser. And this is important because it's not as obvious as you may think. What we can do is we can go from zero, starting on the zero, n equals zero integer, all the way down to n13. But notice that n13 is actually more than one period because if we go from zero to n13, we're actually getting the repetition of the zero again. And we don't want that. We want this pattern to be one complete unique sequence and then it starts again. So you'll see later in this design that one period in, in the diffuser that we're gonna build is actually gonna start on the integer of one and then go to 13 and then it would start over again with um, the one again, and that would be a consistent period. So if you're placing these diffusers side by side on your back wall in your studio, they would work perfectly where you have a complete period, a complete period, a complete period, so forth, of equal diffusion across that wall. All right, so that just wanted to explain that. Hope that made sense. Now let's get into some real world, actually, how in the world do you design this thing? Inches, centimeters, Let's get some wood, let's get some stuff out and actually build these things. So the first thing I would recommend doing is going to one of these quadratic residue calculators. You type it into Google, Bing, whatever, real quick. You're probably gonna come up with one of these calculators that I've found. I've included a link in the description below as well if you wanna just click on that and follow along with me. One of the main things that we will figure out when we're designing these is we can design it for a center frequency or you might find that you have to design it based on the limitation of the amount of depth you have. Remember, these quadratic refuser, diffusers can be really deep to get down to those low frequencies, but you just might not have that much space in your home studio, that's very common. So for this example, I have a real example where I'm designing a home studio for a client in New Zealand, so everything will be in metric, which is fine, you can always do the calculations in inches, imperial if you want. And I'm gonna go through exactly how I built this thing and designed this thing and my thought process. So then you can then do the same thing with your own home studio. So I knew in my design with this studio that I didn't have a ton of depth uh, so that I could have the diffuser be flush with the rest of the acoustic treatment that I'm building into the wall. So that said, I knew I had about 120 centimeters, uh, sorry, 120 millimeters of depth in that space. So I knew I had a limitation of how deep I could build my diffuser. So that set the stage. I also knew I wanted to build a Prime 13 diffuser. This is something that I heard from the Dennis Foley at Acoustic Fields and I like the idea that Prime 13 will sound really good in a control mix room on the back wall. So it's something that I tend to use in my designs with these one singular control room home studio design. So that kind of set my parameters. I'm doing prime 13. I know I have a limitation on my depth. The next thing is that if you want to build these quadratic residue diffusers so that you have whole numbers to use in the dimensions, then you should use a multiple of the prime number in this calculator. Now that sounds kind of confusing. It took me a second to kind of realize this, but if you just put like any sort of width and depth uh, of your diffuser into the calculator, you might get like 2.66 centimeters or 2.68 centimeters. And that type of stuff is gonna be really annoying when you're trying to measure out your diffuser. So instead, if we use a multiple of our prime number, we get nice, even whole numbers for uh, our dimensions, which is a lot easier when you're cutting out the wood and doing measurements and all that stuff. So for example, what I decided to do in this diagram is I said, okay, I know I don't have that much depth, so my theoretical depth I'm gonna put into this calculator is gonna be 13. Because if I do a multiple of 13, say double it to 26, the depth of my diffuser then becomes too deep for my design. So I'm stuck with 13, which is totally fine. It's good and it works. Then for the diffuser width, 
Uh, I know that I might want to design it so that my width looks nice on the back wall and that I've got enough of a diffuse field to capture the wavelengths that I'm going for. So the, for the width of my diffuser, I ended up choosing 65 centimeters, which is a multiple 5 times 13 equals 65. So that'll work out nicely for a nice, good looking width in this room. So not too, too long and wide, but also not too short and small and it will, won't work very well. So if you keep the idea of multiples in mind when using these calculators, it will get you a nice clean whole number sequence for the well depths and for your fin width or your well width, I should say. All right, so let's look at that. So I plugged in all those numbers into this calculator and it plops out all of my well depths from zero to 13, or from one to 13, which is really awesome with the integers there. And then it also tells me my well width to achieve the right uh, high frequency, and that's going to be five centimeters, which is great. A nice even five centimeters for my well width. And then each one of those well depths is going to be calculated based on what we figured out before with that uh, formula with the modulo P and the N squared. So now I have all the dimensions I really need to start to actually go and build this thing. Before I move into the actual build mode, I want you to notice that this calculator is also helpful in the sense that it gives you the low frequency cutoff and the high frequency cutoff for your quadratic residue diffuser. And this is helpful in your design of the room and knowing that, okay, this diffuser that I just created has a low frequency cutoff of 938 hertz and a high frequency cutoff of 4,195 hertz, which is a nice, good mid-range diffuser, and it will really help with living, livelying up the room a bit, making it more lively in the room, because I have a lot of absorption in this room. It's more of a control room. And it will also help with creating a wider and more three-dimensional stereo field in the listening position in the room. So these are all good things and why we want to have a mixture of diffusion and reflection in the room to bounce back some of the, and counteract all the absorption we're doing to help fight the low end in our rooms or I should say control the low end. You don't really want to fight it, ideally. <laughs> all right, let's talk about now how to actually build this thing, how to put it all together, glue it together, screw the wood, cut the wood, all that fun stuff. So first I would recommend using cabinet grade or another term I've seen is marine grade AA plywood. This is going to be cabinet grade, meaning it can be placed in, in the interior of your home and it'll look nice. It's already sanded, it's finished, and you can stain it, make it look great. Uh, but it's a higher quali quality plywood than say the stuff you'd put on the sheathing of your house. Next for this example, I used 12 millimeter, again, cabinet grade plywood for all the exterior parts of this uh, diffuser, meaning the top, the bottom, the back, and the sides are all gonna be 12 millimeter plywood. And then I'm using six millimeter plywood for the fins because I want them to be thinner and allow me as much of that well depth as I can get across there with keeping my diffuser a nice solid width. I'm gonna use 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter spacer blocks on both the bottom and the top of the diffuser. This is going to be the blocks that I can then put my well uh, my well dividers or like the actual piece of wood that flows across the well as you can see in the diagram here. Um, on top of those blocks and that will just make it really easy to get the ideal well height across each of my wells. Here's a diagram below showing the design for the Quadratic 13 diffuser uh, that I've built here and notice that the well depth, so going back to our plans from the calculator, we can see that the well depth is from the top of the fin down to the top of our actual spacer. So where that 12 millimeter plywood that goes the length of the diffuser is going to be there. So keep that in mind as you're designing the pieces of wood and the spacers underneath the 12 millimeter plywood so that you get that accurate well depth. That's how this whole diffuser works. You can also notice that there's 13 wells starting with the integer 1 and going all the way to 13 to the end and then you would repeat the entire period again uh, with a second diffuser right next to it. Now when you're building this I recommend uh, having you know slight carpentry skills. You can definitely teach yourself how to do all this uh, but using um, a router to dado or dado out the um, fins 
is going to be really helpful with this design, this design and making it cleaner and more professional looking. So what you would do is essentially uh, dado out um, a little five millimeter depth into each of where each of the fins is going to be on both the bottom top uh, and back plate of your design. And this way you can just slide the fins into the dado. And a dado, just so if you don't know, is just taking a router and cutting a nice little uh, groove that the pieces of wood would fit into directly into the exterior plywood pieces. And then you can just use uh, wood glue to then attach the fins to the dadoed out exterior pieces of wood. So that that's a really efficient and clean way to do it. And then for your, your exterior pieces of wood, you can just put them together using wood glue and some small uh, wood screws. And I like to use, like I said, the 12 millimeter uh, cabinet grade plywood for the back and the sides, the top and the bottom. And then for your well spacers, you can see in this diagram again, there's gonna be those uh, blocks on the bottom. You can glue those in to the bottom and glue them on the sides on the very top and bottom of your design and then put the 12 millimeter plywood that goes the length on top of the spacers on top of that and again you can glue those on as well. Keep it really clean. Try to reduce the amount of screws that you're going to see in your acoustic diffuser. So that's the general idea of how to build these QRD uh, panels and they're really cool. I, I highly recommend them. They are some of the best diffusers you can build. Uh, and if you don't want to go out and buy them, they are fairly expensive. You can now have the tools and the knowledge of how to build them yourself and how to design using them so that you can try to get as even diffusion as possible across the frequency spectrum in your room. All right. I hope this was helpful. Thanks again for listening and watching. And again, if you are interested in going down this journey of how to acoustically treat your own studio and how to build a soundproof home recording studio, all of this fits together. And I've given you a free PDF guide, my acoustic treatment guide at soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all next week with some more knowledge on soundproofing and acoustics for your home studio. Thank you.